Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Um, before we get started, I wanted to remind you guys to send any of your tournament stories into h.newberryfishing at gmail.com. Um, when we're doing the episodes of the story time, which if you look back on the channel or if you followed along, well, you post that first one. I like some of the responses and stuff that I got, but if I use your story on an episode of story time, which I think we're probably going to end up doing maybe every Wednesday or Thursday or something, I'll send you guys a free lure or a free jig, crankbait, something. For the first one, I'm going to send out a, a free swim jig at least, and, and then we'll just kind of go from there. But anyway, we'll get to it here. I'm going to do some pre-tournament research on Toledo Bend, let you guys know some of my knowledge of the lake um, and previous experiences that I've had there. Um, kind of to start out, we're looking at a, a, early, a tournament earlier in the year, and weights can be pretty good there uh, right now. Um, I've actually got the last time, looks like oh, there was a BFL there on January 26th, which you're going to see really, really similar weather and conditions. Um, but it looks like first place was 24 pounds. And then if you go down, uh, took 12 and a half pounds to get a check, which is super typical there. I Last night when I was at work, I went ahead and jumped through some of the weights and stuff from previous tournaments. And every single year that they hit Toledo Bend that time of year, that is just the one day weights that you see come out of there it seems like but me personally uh, the last time I was on Toledo Bend was for a Toyota Series event back in 2020 and it looks like this weekend is gonna shape up to be fairly similar to that actually it's looking like that uh, that weather conditions the only difference that I'm seeing here um, when compared to 2020 is a pretty drastic difference. Uh, not, I wouldn't say a drastic difference, but a, a large difference in the water level. Back in 2020, we were actually dealing with some really low water, um, and it looks like it's going to be at least three feet higher than, or not three feet higher, about just just under three feet higher than then so at least this weekend you won't be dealing as much with some of the dangers of, of running boat lanes that weren't cut deep enough but looks like going in the weekend what we're what we're looking at are some cooling temperatures Looks like it might warm well probably not actually by the tournament morning we'll be seeing some of the coolest temperatures of the week we got some rain rolling in so what I wanted to mention going into that is that that is something similar that I dealt with last time I was there. A lot of the fish um, you can expect to be catching offshore, but I was looking for uh, um, kind of a shallow water pattern going into that tournament. And what happened during practice is I actually had some of my best days a few days before the tournament as the temperatures were dropping off of getting some good bites up shallow and then over just a couple of days it was like those fish just just took offshore and just vanished um, the weights were pretty tough and then as the tournament progressed we got a couple warm days and it was like all they were just there again now I don't know if everybody else had that same experience but I do know that that tournament was one completely offshore on live scope as I've said in previous videos, I think that live scope has had an impact on a lot of these lakes and these fish are not as easy to catch as they were back then. Anybody, and I, I'm, I'm saying this, the, the bait and everything information because it's this is public information. Everybody can just look this up. But I was specifically fishing in that tournament around the guy that won. It was won by Cody Huff and he was fishing offshore live scoping with a jig and spoon uh really the same way that i explained in the last video on kiwi throwing it to him that was truthfully where i first learned that technique because that was where <laughs> i did not i didn't have live scope in that tournament and that was the first like eye-opening tournament 
to see the the crazy things that live scope could do because the majority of the people in that tournament that I was fishing around and stuff did not have live scope and I was trolling around the side imaging when I'd catch them out in a drain or on a point I would I, w I would turn around and try to catch them as I'm doing this simultaneously I'm watching him over here chasing them down with a trolling motor and it was like what do you even do but that was that was my last experience on Toledo Bend this time of year that when we had these temperatures roll in it shut off those shallow fish and it was one completely offshore and that's what I really foresee happening this weekend it looks like Friday the low on on Friday is gonna be 28 degrees so I mean that's that, that's probably truthfully I mean just what we're looking at here yeah and it's gonna be cool and it, it looks like it'll warm back up a little bit on Sunday Monday but it's not gonna matter then so very very possible that you'll see some of the some of the same things happening that happened at almost this exact same time in 2020 um, I would be looking for the, looking for places offshore truthfully leading up to this tournament if you've got if you found them shallow or doing something else you probably should use your time to look as to where the fish may be going instead of looking for more more things that work for your pattern that's going because things are going to be changing drastically going into this and it's going to happen quickly and and you're going to have to go out on tournament day as most tournaments and and figure out what's going on again but uh yeah hope this helps everybody out for going into the tournament just a little bit of information on what you should be looking at what may happen and uh thanks for watching the video guys subscribe to the channel